I'm going to kick off, I'm going to move the subject on because the main question I'm asking people today is how much free speech should the King enjoy? Uh, this to kick our conversation off from Ellie. She says, Nick, the King is breaking tradition. Uh, and this is him talking about a subject that's close to his heart, which is about the environment. Um, it comes on the back of him actually speaking out on controversial issues, as we know. And she says, Ellie says, our traditions are being eroded daily. He should keep quiet. He's woke and a hypocrite. I won't be watching. Something I've watched and made my family watch my whole life. No, just no, says Ellie. What does Brooks Newmark say? Look, I think I, I think it's always a fine line, but I do think, um, you know, I've grown up with... Uh, uh, King Charles, as he was Prince Charles yeah, when I was yeah, young, likewise. and we've always known his views on the environment. So there's nothing new there. Um, and I do think it's something that we all know he cares passionately about. And I think as long as he's not critical of the government or critical of any party, I think promoting uh, something that he feels passionate about stamps his mark. You know, he wants to make his mark and the area he feels strongest about is the environment so my view is as long as he doesn't stray into criticizing any political party um i think for me it's fine to talk about the importance of the environment it's interesting though isn't it because he went to cop he he played a major role at the cop conference which is all about obviously um uh environment and climate change and it was there was part of me thinking, you've got Rishi Sunak who made the decision literally to spend more time flying there than he actually spent there uh, because he's made a political decision. He, he wants to row back on some of his green measures. He's decided it's the wrong time to implement it. Many people watching and listening here will probably agree with Rishi Sunak's decision. But the fact that he was so committed it in itself was a statement, I am at odds with my government, isn't it? And isn't that the bear trap he's got to avoid? Yes, uh, he he does. But I, I from and look, we'll wait and see what he actually says. But I think, I think he will. Uh, I'm hoping at least he'll be very careful mm -hmm. uh, in what he says about I think he uh, be, about yeah. the government. I think he's just going to talk about the importance of the environment to him, what it means to him, and why he believes that we should be. But it's not an abuse of privilege, you think, to to enter into that I, arena? I, I I I don't think so. No, I mean I'm, uh, you know, I'm a supporter of freedom of speech. Um, and I think we now have um, a, a, a king who cares deeply about this particular issue mm -hmm. and I think we should give him a chance to express that issue while he's king, not just Prince of Wales. OK, uh, well, let's find out not just what Bru Brooks thinks. What do you think? 0344 499 1000. And we've got um, our first caller today. Barry, hello. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, Nick. Merry Christmas to you both. Ah, oh, that's very um, kind. Merry and Christmas. to you. Yeah, I'd just like to make a uh, comment on King Charles, yes. if that's okay. Yes, uh, do. Yeah, when he when his mum died and he became king, he did say that he would reign like his mum. Yes, now, he did. Now, if that's the case, his mum didn't get herself involved in all pol political statements. We know his views on the environment. We've heard him for the last 60-odd years. We know what he's about. And uh, the, 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 the royal family are, post are supposed to be above politics. They are not meant to get involved in political statements. So we don't really need... I, I wasn't really impressed with him going off the COP28. And, yeah, he's the king. He should be above that. I mean, but Brooks, let me uh, pick up on Barry's point. It is true, and it was going through my mind, and Barry's articulated it spot on. I do remember that amazing speech he made, and it was the night or the day after his mother died. He basically said to us, I know things have changed. I'm the king now, and I will respect the Constitution. You, do you think that he's in danger of undermining his own pledge? Look, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a, as someone who's a proponent of of free speech, um, I, I, I think as long as he is careful, not straying into a political sphere, I think this is something that he feels important about, that is important to him, and you know he is the king of all of us, and I think it's uh, fair to give him an opportunity to express his views. We, in turn, have freedom of speech, and once he's given his views, we can express our views on what so, he so says. So, Barry, that, I mean, this is the tension, isn't it? Particularly for watchers of this show and listeners of this show, is we are very passionate about free speech. We, we don't agree. Do, do you feel that, therefore, he is excluded from that free speech because of his position? I, I do, because he's not a member of the public. He is above us. Yeah, right. He is the king of this country. Mm. Yeah, the sovereign of this country. Mm. Yeah, mm. He, 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 with that, with that uh, privilege comes other things. You know, and okay. 
airing your views on behalf of the United Kingdom sometimes. You know, we know what he's all about. We know his views on we know his views, and he's welcome to have them. But I just don't think I think when he was Prince of Wales, it was it was fine, it was all right. But as soon as he became king, it's a no no because he's, Barry, he's, it's, it's interesting. I am inclined to li uh, side with your argument, although I'm I I kind of res respect this this tension that, in a way, as Gemma's put it, she's tweeted, "I don't want a king with no voice," and then happily adds Merry Christmas. Thank you, Gemma. So that's the natural tension. Barry, thanks for kicking off the conversation. Do you agree with Barry? The king should stay above the politics uh, because he is above us, 0344 for double nine one thousand. Or is a new king mean a new era and that we all know what he thinks, so why shouldn't he continue to say it? You can tweet me, of course, as well on Nick Dubois or at Talk. TV. It's interesting. I think um, this this is a classic. I, there, there's one coming here, and I can't see whose name it is. Brooks uh, just here. It says the woke king is on very thin ice. He attended COP28. Doesn't like Rwanda plan. He must have let that be known. I've got a feeling that's what happened. And now a green speech tomorrow. At this rate, at this rate, <coughs> I'm leaning towards the republic view, the republican view. I mean, I see where they're going with that. But there's also the danger is if he was saying something that you agree with, would you object, isn't it? That's the other thing that tends to, 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 to ta challenge the, yeah, the I, idea. Yeah, I sort of want to go back and, and, you know, every subject doesn't necessarily need to be a political subject. Um, you, you know, I think the way you are framing the question is making it political. I think let's wait and see what he actually says That's about true. the environment. That is very true. And let's true. see if it is politically charged or not. I would agree with the other point that I think perhaps criticising the government's Rwanda policy, if he did do that, is political, and I don't believe he should stray into that area. Let me ask you about trust in politicians, OK? Um, I, I'm, I'm one of those people who, uh, and I know I have very vocal discussions about it here on Talk TV, I still think we have the best political system in the world, and, and, and my case for that is that as, a, as an MP, you can be walking around your constituency, anyone can come up to you, they can talk to you, they can ask you to do something. And in theory, in two weeks, you could be asking a Minister of the Crown in the House of Commons about that issue. There's some real strength to And hopefully to quicker. Democracy. You know, I, I, when I was in Braintree, where, you know, I'd actually make sure I shopped in whether yeah. it was Tesco's or Sainsbury's. I'd sort of move around so I could deliberately run into people because that's the best way to understand what concerns your constituents. And I think this criticism of the political class, I think, is unjust because you and me both know that the majority of the 650 MPs or 60, 651 MPs are hardworking, good people who work hard for their constituents. The problem is, is the clickbait journalism that goes on, which is constantly trying to trip up no. uh, politicians on what they say. And I'm sure you're going to be talking about this. Let's deal with James cleverly now, if you wish. You know. Well, I think we should just just hold explain. Off on no, no, we okay. should just explain what it is. James uh, cleverly is the Home Secretary, and at a function at number ten, which is all meant to be off the record, isn't it? So yeah. things aren't meant to be re reported. He said some. I have to say, pretty daft things, allegedly as a joke, about uh, the use of the date rape drug. No, he didn't say this, say that. He says he made a comment about his wife needing to be sedated to put up with him. It, I mean, it's sort it, of a it thing. Was, it was in that context. It was in that it? context. I, I, to me, it was a self-deprecating comment in a private, supposedly a private function. And this, this, this you is, know, we wouldn't, and you wouldn't condone that sort of behaviour, even if it's made a joke. And that's what people are getting sensitive about, no, isn't I, it? I, I know. But I mean, I think that, as I said, there's no room for irony, self-deprecation, jokes or anything. Because what happens is someone deliberately goes into a subject, whatever subject it might be, and deliberately wants to take issue for it. So anytime someone makes a comment, they're almost looking for fault mm. rather than sometimes just taking a, what was, I understand, a fairly self-deprecating comment. I think the, the, the issue for me about this is that he's, he's not prevaricated. He's, he said, basically he said it was a stupid thing to say, I apologise. Of course, right? which is what and, all and politicians frankly, have to do. And, uh, yeah, but, but, but in fairness, I kind of admire him for that. He's dealt with it, he's come out straight on, he's not trying to wash it, and yet I think they're all still calling for his resignation and yeah, all this sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, which, which happened before with him, I think, uh, mm. uh, two or three weeks ago on something else. But <laughs> that doesn't help 
the reputation of politicians, no, does it? No, but, but the thing is, is there is a, a significant percentage of people out there who want to find fault with the other whether the other party, whether it's Conservatives or Labour or Lib Dems, any time somebody in an opposition party makes a comment, they're deliberately looking to find fault. So what happens is we get this unvirtuous circle in the media uh, which constantly is attacking and criticising politicians. Which drives which, what people which think. Which then drives what okay. people think. I'm going to go to our next call, Anthony, in a second, just uh, on the King. But Brooks and I were chatting in the break and he, he, he did actually highlight this question of trust in MPs, one of those rather oddities that I think it's worth exploring, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look at the evidence, the evidence is any time a poll is done on people's own MP, they actually like their own MP. They have trust in their own MP. It's always other MPs in the in the general sense. So, I, I, again, I think we have to be very careful in, in making that judgment. And I think that if you do speak to most people, they do trust and they do like their own MP, hopefully who is always responsive to whatever they want. And back to the King, Leslie says, Hi, I have no problem with the King's tree. I think this is his tree that he's got. It's a, it's a, a, a tree he's using, a Christmas tree. Yeah, to recycle. Behind it, that is basically... Yeah, a you live can, tree. You can plant you it can again. Replant it again. You can replant it again. That's right, that's right. But no way should he use his speech to lecture on the climate, not from his position of wealth and privilege, says Leslie. Let's find out what Anthony thinks. Happy Christmas Eve to you, Anthony. Thanks for calling. Happy Christmas, Leslie. No, he shouldn't. <laughs> He's a hypocrite. Okay. okay. And that MP, you, you, you said, we're going to talk about the king. You made two sentences, but that MP squirmed away about it because he didn't want to talk about it and went on to James cleverly. Uh, so this king, well, we'll, 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 he's, he's an ex-MP, we'll, we'll, I have to we'll, say, uh, uh, Anthony, but you make your points and I'll pick and him I, up And I that. never squirm away from anything, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> well, then, then, then there's a net zero. We have to pay 20% uh, on our top of our electric and all the rest of it. He doesn't pay that because we pay it for him. So then he, he's all for that. He, no, no, hold on, Anthony. I do have to just correct you on one thing. Uh, he, uh, the, my guest, Brooks Newmark, uh, I think you left Parliament in 2017? 15, 15. 2015, when I left Parliament in 2015. So he's not an MP now, but feel free to make your point. Well, the, the net zero. Why should we pay to either? I agree. Pay it. We pay it for him. I mean, he's a <laughs> I agree too. Wait it's a minute. Like... He's a multi-millionaire, the king. Oh, you're talking about the king so now. He be, yeah. He shouldn't. Be, he shouldn't be. I'm always on about the king. He shouldn't have talk, He shouldn't take back taxpayers' money when he's a multi-millionaire because he put his put his own hand in his pocket and pay for a few other things, trooping of the colour and all this sort. He should pay for it himself. He's, he's rich mm. enough. Now look. What, a, what about? You believe in free speech. You come on this station and you you get air your views as much as you like, and I'm all for that. And by the way, I agree yeah. with you about all these staffed net zero taxes. And so, so do I. So we're and so and does so, Brooke. Brooke, so yeah. we're at one on and that. the twenty miles an hour in London. Why and why why shouldn't the king enjoy free speech? Because he, it's just it's not traditional. He, he, he keeps on about tradition and all this sort of stuff. It's just it's just not on. He, every time something crops up he don't like, he sticks his nose in. What was he doing out of the cop? I mean, what did he go there for? Okay. He flew out there, flew back. I mean, he... he he, he, he talks, he talks, what is it, the, the double circles to me. Well, the government would have agreed to him going because they banned him the year before, if you remember. Mm. Rishi Sunak didn't let him go. So the well, government well, kind of that's, let that's him go. A, that's about the only thing Sunak's done right then, banned him last <laughs> You're not a fan of Rishi Sunak then? No, not really. Uh, now, <laughs> listen. Mean, he's quite useless, isn't he? He's quite useless. I what? mean, he's just pathetic. Whilst I've got you, Anthony, let me ask you this. Apparently, only 8% of us trust MPs, 92% don't. Do you think, do you have a lack of trust in all MPs, or are there any that you would give the benefit of your doubt to? Before all this started in the last couple of years, I would have given the benefit to, to the MPs, but it all seems to have gone out the window for the whole lot of them. I used to watch the uh, programme on BBC Two, Politics Live. There was MPs who used to sit there, sit there, sit there, week after week. They never got off their butt to say anything. It's just the same five or six MPs that had the... Uh, 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 you know, to get up and say something to the speaker. Most of them just sat there twiddling with their thumbs, playing on their phones and all that. And I thought, well, you lot are a complete waste of any time. Do you think, do you, will you vote at the next election? Are you that fed up? No, 
um, but I, I, I did decide not to, but uh, reform has co- come out with so many good policies. I think we need that change. And which, we need that change desperately. Which one do you it like most? I, I was reading Reform's manifesto this morning, which I'm sure Richard Tice would be really pleased to hear. Um, but but tell me, what um, what uh, what uh, what what one policy do you like about Reform? That they're going to change all the things that these people have um, done. They're going to do the things that they keep saying they're going to do, such but they as? don't do. What? Well, the boats were and all that sort of the stuff. Boats. And the NHS and the. Uh, and all the money the civil servants waste and all that and all that. And do you believe them? And all this. Do, you, do you believe them? Do you trust them? Well, you haven't been in power yet. That's all I ah, but say, so. you're going to invest your faith, your vote, which is hugely yes, valuable. So I know he's not going to win enough seats, but he might not win, a, win enough, well, enough seats to have a little bit of power. If Would, you like, like the, the, I mean, the, the Liberals... Well, cool. well, hang on, before we talk about Liberals, one final question, because I'm enjoying our call, Anthony. Would you prefer Nigel Farage as leader to Richard Tice? No, I don't think so now. I think Nigel's had his day in that, like, as uh, leader. He can't come back now. Uh, I mean, he's the... I tell you, I think Richard Tice will think I bunged you a tenner for that.